So hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to do the Xandros rotation in Premiere Pro. As for the plugins, you need Sapphire and RSMB. Even though RSMB is optional, it's going to be useful for any motion blur. To get started, you want to have your clips ready, I've got mine right over here. What you want to do is add the S shake effect onto your clip and you want to copy down my settings. So what I've done is I changed the frequency to 2, open up the X shake, you want to set these both to 0 and then it should go 50. 0 0.75 and then leave the x phase at 0. Y shake is the same 0, 0, 50, 0 0.75 and then 0. Ignore the z shake, you want to move on to the tilt shake. It should go 0, 0, 1.5, 0 0.75 and then 0. Once you are done, you can minimize this and then just copy it over to all of your clips. So right click, copy and then just paste it onto every single clip. So now I've got the same shake effect on every clip. Next up, you want to search for the warp transform effect, drag it onto the first clip we're going to do a scale out so you want to keyframe the z dist and set it to 0 0.6 at about eight keyframes ahead so five six seven eight reset it back to one and then graph it so click on the arrow pull the handle towards the left let go right over there and you want to pull this handle over here towards the left as tight as it can be but make sure the velocity is near zero so let's say about there you want to head towards the end of the clip but just one keyframe back so right over here and then set the z dist to 0 0.7 click on the middle keyframe and you want to pull this handle towards the right make sure it's on level so not too high or too low just about there right there and then you want to just pull this towards the right so i'm just going to leave it there and as you can see it creates like a bump now you want to head back to the middle so the second keyframe of the first clip what we did for the z dist and what we want to do is just keyframe the shift x y move towards the end and what we want to do is pull it all the way to the left so it should look something like this and you want to graph this as well so pull it all the way to the right and pull this towards the right as well you want to scroll down until you find wrap x and wrap y and you want to set both of these to reflect we're going to do the same thing with rotate so just keyframe that make sure it's at zero head over towards the end and you want to set that to 24 and as always we're going to graph it pull it to the right pull this to the right as well and so far it should look something like this second clip you want to add the warp transform effect once again keyframe the z dist to 1.1 oh and also make sure to change the wrap x and y to reflect head about eight keyframes ahead so five six seven eight set it to 0 0.95 you want to graph this as well but towards the left make sure you also pull this keyframe towards the left as well head towards the end one keyframe back and you want to set it to 0 0.6 graph this towards the right just like like that. Keyframe the shift x y and we want to shift it towards the right so as you can see it's moving right. You can leave it at 700, it depends on your sequence size. Leave it at something like this where you can see a bit of the reflection. But anyways head over to the middle and you want to reset this back to what it was originally. Graph this as well to the left and you want to shift this to the right once again so I'm just going to pull it left. So it's going to move it towards the right. And I think I'll go for something like negative 200. In fact, we'll do negative 300. Graph this to the right, pull down and tighten it. Now time to do the rotate once again. So keyframe it to negative 16 at the beginning. Head to the middle and set it back to zero. Graph it to the left. And towards the end, you want to set this to negative, I think it was negative 24. And then just graph it to the right. Just like that. And there you go. Now before we move on to the third clip, there are some things we need to fix. For some reason, the value on the shift xy keeps on jumping high and then back low to fix this you want to just click on the first keyframe head over to this over here i don't know how to pronounce that but you want to just click linear instead of auto bezier so just click that the same goes for the second keyframe just click on linear the third one as well and make sure you're not doing this one it should be the second one and now it should look a little less jittery depending on how you've done it but so far you should get something like this clip three once again we're going to add the warp transform effect keyframe the z dist set it to 1.1 make sure to set these to reflect 5, 6, 7, 8, set it to 0 0.9, graph this towards the left and don't forget to pull this to the left as well. And for the end bit you want to set it to 0 0.6, pull it to the right. Head back to the beginning you want to keyframe the shift x y and pull it towards the left. I'm going to set mine to 1460 so we can see a bit of the reflection once again. Head to the middle and reset it, graph it towards the right and even though this transition looks really cool we're not done yet. Rotation once again, keyframe the rotation to 20 at the beginning and 
reset it in the middle, graph it towards the left, and for the end, you want to set it to 24, graph it towards the right. Now, since we added a rotation, you can see that it kind of looks smoother, almost as if these two clips are in sync with each other. And the final clip, this part is very easy. Keyframe the Z-Disc to 1.2, head towards the end and reset it, graph it towards the left. Pull this one as well if you want to, you don't have to. Make sure to change the wrap to reflect. Keyframe the rotation at the beginning to negative 24, zero at the end, and do the exact same, graph it towards the left. And once you're done, that's pretty much all you have to do. If I do play it back, you can see we've made the rotations really well. Now it does look a bit stiff, and so what you can do is add an adjustment layer on top. Make sure it's on top of all of the clips. You want to add the RSMB Pro effect, set the blur amount to 0.6. The track frame should be set to previous, and that's pretty much it. Now it's smoother than before. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and I will see you next time. So yeah, peace.